Okay, so hopefully everyone can see my stream. Um, so I have set up some scripts today, which I am um, instead of us doing it um, as I go, what I might do is I'll show you the scripts um, and I'll go to each one, explain what's going on. Um, and then I may like stay here while you try and get it done. Um, so we'll, we'll try something different today. So just first of all, if I press play, essentially from before, what we did have, we had a player, we had animation set up, so it knows which way to go, it knows which way it's aiming, um, and it has like uh, state ch changes of animation based on based on like its current parameters. So whether it's jumping, whether it's in the air, whether it's falling, um, and whether it's like uh, running. So we have all of those set up, um, and for today, basically, I hope you should have seen that already. Um, what I'm setting up is I'm setting up UI so this is uh, player feedback I'm setting up as well a collectible so there's a very simple collectible here um, and you can just collect it and you see that it updates the score and it also has a on the right it shows how many pickups are left in the level and right now there's zero um, this is also going to be a um, a kind of like modular system, meaning like if I create more of these that will update itself tells me there's five and it also continues updating oh, it's a little error there, it's updating the score twice um, okay, so that will be more or less what we're covering today um, are there any kind of specific issues people are having before we begin? Are we all good? Okay. Uh, we might do some game feel stuff as well, which is like allowing, allowing their, if you look at this, right, this is a game feel thing, which um, it's a bit of game design, but it's it follows in programming. So I'm trying to jump when I hit this point, right? Um, and if I jump too early, it's fine. But if I jump too late, like just there, I don't know if you could tell, I was just, um, I just missed it. So I need to hit this little pixel, and this is annoying. Um, so most most games don't just allow you to only jump at this little edge point. They have something called Coyote Time, which is just a little quick timer um, that allows you to to have a little split second before before you uh, when you jump off that you are still allowed to kind of have a little a little bit of a jump. Um, so it is something that's uh, just makes the game feel a lot better and not as pixel um, pixel perfect, which can be annoying. So we'll have a look at that as well, hopefully, if we have time. So I've already set this up. So I'll just go to the scripts that have been set up here. Um, so first of all, I created something called a game manager, and you almost want to have some. You almost always want to have something like this. I don't know if you've seen this before. Um, in fact, if I create an empty game object called a game manager, Unity automatically. Um, and if I set the script there for game manager, you need to automatically assigns it this kind of like cog shape because it knows that this is going to be a game manager. It, it's so commonplace that it automatically goes, okay, you have a script called game manager. I'm going to assign it this special logo. So this is just a, a C sharp script. Um, but it is, um, it is recognized by unity because of the title being game manager. Okay. Um, what, we can also do uh, is we have a canvas, which is UI. So let me, should I just delete this and redo it? Yeah, I'll just delete this and redo it. So you can see it from scratch. So I've deleted that. Um, what I'm gonna create is UI. Um, and I can create a, you don't want text, like text works fine, but there are scaling issues with text. So um, text will uh, kind of like be blurry in some cases so we want to use text mesh pro text mesh pro is technically 3d so um, it uses 3d in order to um, to display the text so it scales much better so if i click that and it creates <laughs> it creates text straight away so there's that new text and we have a giant canvas like here so every time you create any ui element, text uh, my text mesh pro is one of the ui elements it will automatically create a canvas as well. And the canvas is where the UI will be displayed. Um, 
Text Mesh Pro, you may have to download the Text Mesh Pro Text Mesh Pro um, package from the package manager. So you may have to go Windows Package Manager, or it may be there already, depending on your project. Um, so just FYI, if you don't see Text Mesh Pro, you may have to download it as a package. So let's have a look at the canvas. All right, um, I'll go through what the what we're going to link the text to later, uh, but for now. I'll just go through the basics of Canvas. So the Canvas is kind of like a screen representation. You can see it here. You see the way it says new text on the bottom left and new text on the bottom left here? It's kind of related to this uh, screen. So if I click the new text and drag it around, you'll see that it's dragged around here as well. So if I tell the new text to show up in the middle, it shows up in the middle of the screen. If I click on the Canvas, there's a bunch of different variable render modes. So by default, it does a screen space overlay. So that's why the canvas is so huge. It's not related to the um, uh, to the to the actual scene itself. It's related to the screen space. So if I change the screen space, it should change with it. However, one thing I may want to do is instead of a screen space overlay, I may want to lock it to uh, a camera if I want to. Um, so I can say, hey, screen space, meaning showing on the screen, but instead of an overlay over everything, set it to the camera. And then I'm just gonna drag in that camera that I have. Um, and you can see that it's more or less the same thing, except now the canvas has snapped to my camera viewpoint. Um, why you may or may not wanna do this is you may want the UI elements to change depending on whether I uh, change my camera size so if I change my camera size, oh, wrong camera. If I change my camera size, it will um, also update the UI. Um, whereas screen space, it will update based on the screen size, and it's unrelated to the camera. Now, what you see on the screen and what you really see on the camera are sometimes exactly the same. So some, it, it's kind of confusing why there's two different things, but they are slightly different. So let's go back to the text. The other thing you need to know about UI is um, when you move it to certain locations, they have these things called hooks. So there are these little hooks, right? Um, if I select the text, I can move that hook. Now these hooks are basically like, if I do that, um, that hook is in the center. So horizontally and vertically, it's hooked to the center. Meaning if I scale this, it is keeping the same distance horizontally and vertically from the center, all right? Which may be bad because, um, especially if I'm developing for Android, if I scale the screen size down, you can see it's gone and it's disappeared because my screen resolution has gone down, but it's, it's locked to the center. The hook is locked to the center, so it keeps staying there. So my UI now disappears off screen. So instead of that, what I may wanna do uh, let me just set it to 1920 by 1080. So this is standard screen size. Um, I may want to put it up here and I can manually move the hooks. So I can manually move them up here like that. So now it's hooked to the top left. And now if you see when I scale it, it always stays the same distance from the top left in vertically and uh, vertically and horizontally. All right. Um, I can do that manually or I can also click here and there's a bunch of like anchor presets. So that's the center, which is the default. I can hook it to the center left, center right, whichever. So I can pick each of these. Um, if I do it like um, these are <clears throat> these are stretch hooks. So if I do that, for example, if I had the text in the middle, it would keep the same distance from top and bottom. So then it would kind of like uh, stretch it based off my screen horizontal. Oh no, that's not changing because I have there we go so it kind of squishes basically you can see it's kind of squishing and stretching but it will have like a limit of where it can show up or not so it just depends on what you're trying to do uh, in my case i kind of want to hook top left um, and let me undo that cool let's hook top left um, and that should work fine for me okay cool um, and then the text that i have i can put in whatever text i want here um, if I don't adjust that via code, it will just show that text. So um, if I want to put like, hello, 
um, that's whatever it is, but I can also access this true code and then update that um, as I go. So this is, what was the left one going to be score? Hello, I am score. I can call that score, score text. Um, you can change fonts here. Um, these are the fonts that I have in my project. If you want to add more fonts, you need to import them. Um, you can download fonts from uh, sites like Font Squirrel. There's free free fonts out there. You download them as a, a font and you can just import them as any other asset. When you import them as an asset, you need to can see them, you need to can access them. So, yep, here we go. Um, so you have your alignments down here. So whether you're center justified, left justified, right justified, all that kind of typical stuff, whether you're like top justified, middle or bottom justified, um, that all can be changed there as well. Here's a text bounding box that you ideally want to be bigger than the text. Okay, cool. Um, you can choose whether it wraps um, overflow or whether it like truncates where it clamps. So it just like, you know, cuts off or you can overflow, which usually you want to overflow. Uh, not always. If you imagine like I have a huge wall of text that I can scroll through, I may want to truncate in that case. So there's my score text. I'm just going to duplicate that. And this will be my pickup text. I'll put that top right. I'll call that pickup text. And top right. And hello, I am, where is it? I am pickup. Okay, so I've set up this UI, very basic UI. Um, on the left is going to be my score. On the right is going to be like um, uh, a count of how many pickups are there are in the scene. Okay, so now let's go look at the pickups. So I have this pickup here. I've already, um, I haven't prefabbed it actually. So I will prefab it now in a second. So what I did is I just found a sprite. Um, if you remember those sprites that we, we had on the first day. Um, where are they? Hard assets, just in here. I went to the sprite editor and I just cut another little sprite around, um, just expand this, around this little vase here. So I manually just set up a little sprite here um, and I called that pickup. I dragged that sprite in, it was a pickup sprite, and then I just gave it like a little pickup script. So let's have a look at that pickup script. Um, and this just goes in the pickup. That's all it has, um, a sprite, a pickup script, and then it has a uh, box collider 2D that is gonna be a trigger because I actually don't need to start in the update. Go away. Um, and I have this on trigger enter 2D um, Why is it giving out? I don't know why it's giving out. Okay, so I have it on trigger enter 2D. Um, so if any 2D collider go, comes in, it's gonna assign the term collision to that 2D collider. If that collision dot tag is player, so if it detects a player colli um, a collision happening, um, it will go and talk to the game manager and we'll look at the game manager. It's gonna minus one from the current pickup counts so the game manager has a, uh, a count of how many pickups are in the scene. It's going to tell the game manager to update the, the score uh, by whatever we set the pickup value to be. And then it's going to destroy itself. So it's going to basically just delete itself. So that's what it's going to do. So anytime a player enters that trigger, so let's have a look at it. Here it has a box collider. It's set as a trigger. Anytime a player collider enters it, it does this and then destroys itself. So now let's have a look at the game manager. So we're kind of working, working backwards. Game manager's here. And let's open the game manager script. So usually the concept of a game manager is somewhere where you hold all important stuff uh, pertaining to the game state. So not necessarily like stuff like player health, although you can. Um, we're 
kind of thinking more for stuff that doesn't that's a little more middle to long term um, sometimes you'll often see the game manager has something called a do not destroy and load do not destroy and load is a unity thing which basically means that you don't destroy that uh, game object uh, when you load a new scene um, and so when you like get to the end of a level you load a new level you don't destroy the game manager you keep the game manager so that game the same game object keeps staying uh, through all the different scenes um, and that's that's how it tracks stuff like score tracks stuff like your inventory maybe like how much stuff you have um, whether you've uh, reached certain checkpoints whether you've done certain things um, and it's kind of like an overall um, controller that's why it's called the game manager so here's the op object that don't destroy on load if you haven't seen that before sometimes you'll see that on game managers to make sure that it doesn't as it says, loading a new scene destroys everything in the current scene. But if you have a don't destroy, don't destroy on load, the that game object won't be destroyed. So um, I have here up there. I don't have to use. I have these like um, calls to libraries. Um, you don't have to anymore use Unity Engine UI. So you don't need to tell your script that I'm using Unity Engine UI. That's now default. Uh, but I am using TM Pro. So TM Pro is Text Mesh Pro, because if you remember, um, the text that I'm using is not text, it is uh, Text Mesh Pro text. Okay, so it's 3D text, which means it doesn't, it doesn't get like uh, as blurry. So let me go back. So I need to tell Unity that I'm using TM Pro. I'm also using static variables. And static variables, I don't know if you've heard of them before, but essentially a static, anything that's static, it means it can only be one of those things. The reason I'm having a static variable is I don't want to have any other variables accidentally in my scene called score that maybe I get confused with and they start like affecting each other. So having a static just means this is the only thing in that scene and therefore um, <clears throat> not only is it locked and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like stable, Anything that affects it can also affect it because it knows that it's the only thing in that scene. So I have a static int, so just a not a float, just an int, uh, full numbers for score. I have a game a public static game object array, and an array is defined by open square brackets and close square brackets. An array is like essentially just a um, a group of stuff, and uh, the group will get updated. Uh, I can update the group or I can run an update once and it'll it'll look for whatever I'm telling it to look for. In this case, I'm telling it to look for game objects um, and then assign them to that array. And my array is called pickups and scene. So when I run this, it's going to run um, and find all the pickups in the scene and make a whole array of them. Okay, so public static game object picks up and scene. So it's going to make a whole array of them. I have a pickup count as well, so like what's my, how many are left in the level at the moment, and then two public variables for the TMP underscore text is text mesh pro text for the score text and the pickup text. If I go to Unity, my game manager has them there, so I can just drag those in. Score text goes here, pickup text goes here, so it knows to affect those two things. Cool. So let me just type that static variables can be accessed from other scripts and uh, only one can exist at any time. Ah, so this is the part where I'm going to cover how the game, how the script knows. Okay. Um, finally, I have just this public static int. It doesn't need to be a static int. Um, I could just make it a, a public int, but um, it is how much each pickup is worth. Okay, so in this case, it's a hundred. So, on start, um, this is where it defines how many pickups are in the scene. So, if you remember, I create, I created, um, I declared a array, game object array. 
called pickups and scene. So my game object array, pickups and scene, uh, I'm populating array with all game objects that are pickups. How do I know that they're pickups? I'm using this um, class called game object dot find game objects with tag. And then I have a bracket bracket with a, a string called pickup. So if I look at the pickup now, I gave it a tag pickup. Um, by default, we don't have that tag. I think we covered tags last week, but you can add a tag and you can see I've added a tag called pickup. Just press plus to add a tag. Uh, it does need, it is case sensitive, so you need to make sure that it's spelled correctly. So I just applied the pickup tag to this thing and what it will do then, it's going to find game objects. So not just one, you need to, because there is a find game object as well, but find game objects with tag uh, pickup and it's going to tell the pickups and scene array hey, here are all the game objects in the scene that I found that have the tag pickup. So now it knows that, okay, those are all the, those are all the game objects that are pickup. Um, and then I can say how many there are by going like current pickup counts. So that was just an int is pickups in scene dot length. And because pickups in scene is an array dot length will give me the, um, the amount of stuff in that, in that array. Um, so you saw when I at, when I duplicated more pickups, it knew that there were more pickups because the this command found all the the new pickups, and then this command goes, oh, okay, you found this many. Your array is full of five pickups, so I know that it's five pickups. Um, just so everyone knows, when you refer to an array, so an array will come in like um, it's something like um, I'm just going to type this here. I'll delete this now. So like you'll have pickup. Um, so it's going to give me errors, pick up, and then it'll assign it something like pick up one, for example, and pick up two, and it's going to assign them like that in the array, but arrays always start with a, a zero as the first one. Okay. So it's always going to be zero, one, two. So the other good thing about arrays is you can specifically define, Hey, I want you to only affect the second pickup, but if I wanted to only affect the second pickup, that would be pickups in scene uh open open bracket like a, a open square bracket one because one is the second pickup close bracket so let's let's see that let's see if i can do that um just as a test okay um let me prefab this pickup first have you covered prefabs you have right So I'm just going to drag it in that changes it to a pickup uh, prefab and I'm going to duplicate a few of these. Cool. All right. That's good. All right. So there's a few there. Um, and then I'm going to try to add something. So whatever the second, now it doesn't, the way the game object finds stuff, this, this command specifically, it randomly finds stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily go by this number it's just going to keep finding them uh, randomly but what I want I may want to do is let's see if we can mess with something on the second pickup so I'll do like pickups in scene uh, number one so that's the second one dot uh, let's mess with the mesh render maybe no it's no mesh render let's mesh with the sprite render Can I mess with that? It is a game object. Dot. Do I need to, the transform would be the easiest actually to mess with. Okay. Dot transform. Dot local scale. Dot y equals 0.2. That work, or do I need to? Do, no, I'll need to do a, a new vector two. New vector two. Okay. Dot y. Cool. 
So I'm going to find the second pickup in that it that it detects, and I'm just going to squish it. Um, I'm going to make the X scale squished, and I'll keep the Y scale as normal. So let's see if that works. Cool. You can see that here. So that one was detected as the second one, and then I, that got squished. So that's kind of what I mean by um, if you want to access everything in an array, um, you can, and you define them like that. So this pickups and scene one is the second thing in the array. So it detected that second one, and then we just squished it there. So let me get rid of that because I don't want that. Okay. Um, then the other thing I'm doing, which is very simple, is just that like on update so um, every every kind of like frame that I'm doing this I am going to um, update the score text which I remember I have that public so it's just uh, it knows what the score text is because I dragged it into that field so it's going to update the score text and I, if I just do dot text that means like um, here is the text for it um, change it to this is a string, so it's just a string that says score. I have a little space, so there's a space, and then it updates with whatever the current score is. And the same here, it updates the uh, how many pickups are left with whatever the current pickup count is. Okay, um, and my current pickup count, I can, I can continuously check this. So this this, it's not wrong. So I can put this in update, so it's constantly checking, constantly checking how many pickups are there in the scene, how many pickups, how many pickups, um, and then updating it there. So I can do it that way, but you can see that I only called it at the start because I don't want that running every frame. Um, it's technically what we call not performant to run something like that every frame if I don't need to. Instead, what I do is on the pickup, because these variables are all public static, I can access them from a different script. So in the pickup, I say game manager, because that script's called game manager, and Unity automatically knows. So if I start typing game manager, Unity knows that there's a class, or uh, which is another word for a script, game manager. Because you see, public class game manager, when I start typing, it knows that I'm trying to reference game manager. So game manager and then dot current pickup count, because I have a public static current pickup count, it means I can access it. So I'm telling um, on the pickup itself, I'm telling the game manager um, when you see, uh, when, when I'm collided with, um, edit your current pickup count from whatever you had at the start to minus one. So I've done that here. And then edit your score to whatever you had, uh, whatever you have right now um, to the uh, pickup value. So whatever the pickup value here is. So I, I defined it as 100. So it's going to edit that to to um, to update it to that number. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, that's fine. And then it destroys itself. Okay, so that's how that works. That That's just kind of like, um, this is a very common concept where it's things in a scene um, have components on them that access one script or other scripts and kind of tell those scripts or tell those components to to be to be edited. Um, it depends. Right now, I'm doing like game manager, so like let me actually make this. Can I make this static? So there's only one game manager ever. No, I can't. I need to keep it as public static. Uh, but I. I can also access stuff specifically on my components uh, by using the get components, and then instead of um, instead of putting a type like rigid body, I would use get components, and then I would just fill in that component name uh, in the get components field where it says type. So, if I was looking for, let's see, I was looking specifically for the sprite render in myself, it would be like small g game object because that means me dot get component of type and in this case it's sprite renderer don't care what it's called and then i can do whatever dot whatever so in this little triangle brackets 
if I had a different script on here, I would just type in the name of that script. That way it knows to only reference that instance of a script on my game object because it's small g game object. Okay. Any questions so far? This so far hasn't been, hopefully hasn't been too complicated. All good. Okay. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do now that I've covered that is you're going to try set up the same stuff. So you're going to try and set up this, um, what I have here where you have a pickup that you can detect, you can collect. Um, I, th I think I know why it's doing the, the double 600 is because I have two colliders and it's colliding very quickly. So it may be detecting both colliders. Remember, we set up two colliders on the player. Um, so I may need to put a bool variable in there so it doesn't do it more than once. Um, yeah, I think I'll put a bool variable. So once one collider has um, has collided with it, we'll add a bool or, a, yeah, we'll just set up a bool and it won't add more than, so let's, let's do that real quick actually. So that's the pickup. So if collision dot tag, let's do a public. Oh, pool. Um, and let's call it picked up. And we don't need to declare that it's false because if we don't declare anything, it automatically knows that it's false. Uh, so we'll set here picked up is true. Oops. And we'll set the if condition to only update if picked up is false. So before it has been picked up, won't do that. So even if two colliders go in, the first collider should set it to true and then it shouldn't run this again. So let's try that. Oh, 100, 200, 300. I don't seem to be getting the double again. 400. Um, can't reach those. Dang it. Uh, let me grab them. Do, do, do. Yep, it's all working perfectly. Cool. So I just needed that check to make sure, uh, because again, if people don't remember, my player has two colliders on it, actually has multiple colliders on it because it's got the trigger here as well. So it might have been detecting uh, both of those colliders at once. Um, but if I set that bool, that means it'll only happen once. So that'll solve that problem. Cool. Now, um, now that I've gone through that, what do you all think about trying to do that in class? And hopefully, if you can do it, we'll move on to having some basic enemy AI, uh, like super basic, like kind of patrolling enemy, um, and and setting those up, and maybe a health system as well, like a very basic health system. So let's try that. So I'm going to type that into chat and... explain what you need to do.